Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome back to Let's Play The Final Fantasy Legend, a game that has nothing to do with Final Fantasy, but is freaking phenomenal. Oh, this comes up every now and again. I think it means we're going to get a free round of attacks on this poor goblin here, who's just going to get obliterated. Uh, I'll just use Nail Attack over here, and that's going to be fine. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> probably get one shot. I'm just running back to the first town, which is the place that sells the gold breastplate, and we're going to pick up one of those, um, because while we don't need it for the next king... We will want it for the um, the end game guy, just in case. It'll probably prevent someone from getting one shotted, um, and it's also a good excuse to farm a little more. Oh, and zombie meat is actually exactly what I want to feed to Ira over here, which will change him into a phantom. Don't get me wrong, that oni was very good. I think at the end of the last video I said something about not feeding him any more meat, but that is the next one in uh, the sequence to potentially optimize things. Uh, I don't have any damage, so yeah, I'm just gonna go and buy one gold breastplate here. Uh, especially since once we get rid of the king armor, we won't be, uh, well, the, we won't have the king armor anymore. Alright, welcome to the, de the Department of Redundancy Department. We'll get the uh, gold bracers as well, and which we can equip right away. So, khan has got that. Ice has the bronze bracers, so we'll give, him that, give her that one. And yeah, we're going to keep the gold arm. Actually, you know what? I'm going to equip that on ice right away. It'll be slightly more conven convenient for later on, so that does drop her defense considerably. But she's not going to have that much longer. And she's not going to have it for the next tough fight. Basically, all the fight fighting that we're going to do um, while we still have the king armor wouldn't be very difficult, so it's kind of moot. Alright, so now we're going to go to the shield castle. The one we've been avoiding so far, the one that was in plain sight all this time. And in there, if we'd gone in previously, well, and even now, if we go and we talk to any guards, all they do is they kick us out. So we want to avoid the guards, and if we'd gone in, up these stairs into the throne room, they would have just been a, a nasty king and a nasty steward saying annoying things to us. But now things have changed because the king has died. The king is dead, and then the steward's like, how nice, he arrives in time now, I can frame you for the king's murder. And he's going to sick a couple of dudes on us, and wake again, he's going to initiate an attack. I'm betting that's what happens from having a uh, very high um, agility, is the, the random chance to get like the free shots over here. So our phantom's got chill again. It's the next uh, level up from the, I guess, the zombie that we were earlier. So it's the same attack name, but it's got, it should have somewhat better stats. But it's still pretty weak. Clearly the phantom is not as good as the oni, but it can get us somewhere a little bit stronger. I don't think we want to have the skeleton. Where's my list over here? Um, I am a phantom, and this is skeleton meat. Actually, I'm betting it does nothing. Indeed, it does nothing, because, well, I, I don't know, we're both undead. Cancel that. And the steward, I don't know, some of the text goes away instantly. I wasn't holding anything on the keyboard, but the steward just freaks out, runs through a secret door over here, so we're going to go and chase him down and have the easiest fight in the entire game. He does have a colt he can shoot us with. You want money? I'll give you anything, even the shield. Well, we do want the shield, but you deserve to die. Also, we're, we'd kill you anyway, because that's the way we roll. So I'll queue up all the attacks, but it would probably just die in one hit. Uh, 21 might not be enough. Nope, it is. Super squishy. We get 400 gold from that. You're a scum. You make me sick. You get the king shield, and we can say, he is dead. We click on him some more, and there's a convenient back door over here. So now we have to go to the town. I think this town is actually called the Town of Hero. We're going to go to the inn, make sure we're topped off. And we are. Uh, how much gold do we have? Um, Just in case. I'm going to play it slightly safe over here. I'm going to go to the potion shop. I'm going to buy an agility potion and two hit point potions. Oh, my inventory's full. So I'm going to use the Agility Potion on Wake. And oh yeah, I can't go down. And the Hit Point Potion on Wake as well. There we go. 15 on that roll, not bad. Oh, which means I'll have to go to the Inn again. And then I want more more Hit Point Potion. And I will use that over there. That was only 11, but still, hey, not, I can't complain. Two digits is good. We're going to sell the Bronze Bracers. And we'll be getting rid of those king items in a second. So we're gonna be we're gonna put them on the statue because the statue has been missing. It's a statue of a hero. It's been defaced at some point. So there we go. Just top off wake and go in here. Doop -doop. So yeah, something's missing from the statue. So what we have to do is use the items here, which is not very intuitive. We need to use all three items, and then we get a sphere. The sphere is used to unlock the door at the tower. And then we're going to leave. And then, uh-oh, something crazy happens. 
It scared the crap out of me the first time it ever happened when I was a kid. Genbu says, here's another who has the three items. And we gotta fight our first boss. And again, we get, like, the free attack right at the start, which is just glorious. Um, I think I'm gonna barrier my team, just to say. In fact, I'm gonna double barrier. And then tell this guy to chill. So this does stack up. So we're gonna have plus 20 defense. And, I mean, that that's a lot. Because a lot of our guys are running around at, like, 10 or 15 defense. So we only hit with 10 chill damage. And the rapier does 15, which isn't great. This is a guy with a shell, which isn't fantastic. We could debuff him with stench and different things like that, but I think we're just gonna go and start wailing on him at this point. It should be okay. There we go, 23 damage. Chill on those three. It was very pathetic, actually. 16 damage here. Mutants are doing better than Wake. Eh, 14 damage ain't too shabby. Gas attack! Oh, so our armor doesn't even help with that. But he does have a variety of attacks. I forgot he does magic stuff, though, so... Maybe I didn't need to waste time barriering. It might still work out. Wow, that is really weak. I think he might just be defending, yeah. The fact that we've done such little damage, yeah, he's defending with his shell. So he didn't attack us, we just did a lot less. But that's okay, I'm okay with that. He can defend every turn. The fight will take longer, we'll use up more charges on your, our weapons, who cares. Oh, he's just gonna use... Oh, maybe I really didn't need the barrier. Although I think he may have been defending the first round too, so... Oh, that's a lot of mist. What? Just missed outright? Maybe we rolled such low damage. Maybe it wasn't a real miss, we just rolled really low damage, so it said that. But sometimes it says it just does no damage. Anyway, we're, we're gonna be okay here. Um, I think. Okay, he has spread around the attack. He could definitely, you know, if he focus fired those gas attacks, I think he'd be able to obliterate us pretty good. Because we can't use heal potions or anything, not that we have any, but um, even if we did, we can't use health potions in combat. There are cure spells. You can buy the spell books, or your mutant can develop it, um, which are really handy. You can use them in combat or out of combat. But there you go. Yenbu has been defeated. We got 900 gold. Don't think it's over. All right. Thanks, dude. We're just going to top ourselves up at the end. 74 gold. And then we're going to go to the starter town, which may be called the Town of Tower. I don't know. Do, 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 do. And probably one shot a goblin. It would be nice if uh, the cursor remembered the position of the last fight. And one, there's a lot of big improvements in Final Fantasy Legend 2. One of the which is I think it does default your cursor to whatever you know, the last attack you used in the, in the previous fight, which is really handy. Also, one of our people just ran out of rapiers, didn't they? Was it Wake? No. Ice? Oh, Ice still has one charge, but I should replace that because otherwise we can get halfway through a fight and not use anything. Khan still has eight. You know what? I'm just going to replace you as well before we go into the tower. And wake, you're, you're good there. So that's going to be fine and plenty. I'll just have to make sure to sell them. Do we need any hit points? Yep, we do. Good. Um, yeah, so that's one improvement. The other improvement is that they did introduce a robot class. They may not have monster classes in Final Fantasy Legend 2. Um, which I think is fine, because I think the monster is an interesting concept, but not actually all that fun. Uh, let's just save again. And actually, let's go ahead and get some agility potions. And maybe actually... We're going to go and get two health po uh, health potions, hit point potions, for Wake here. I, I would have liked to get a third, but I need to use the end. Again, that only affects your maximum. Oh, that seemed like a poor roll. Uh, it only affects your maximum HP, so if we want to actually take advantage of that in the tower, we're going to have to go and heal up. Um, yeah, so the other improvement is that the mutants no longer have this setup where they have four slots just locked down for abilities that are kind of randomized. For example, here's Stealth. Stealth is the ability that gives you a chance to attack first in combat. That's probably why we keep getting that uh, effect. Um, and yeah, so it doesn't have these four permanently lost, locked slots. Instead, any empty slot could potentially develop as a mutant power. And what you do to, to maximize that, and also it only ever rerolls the bottom most ability. So what you do is you like, right at the start, you fill up all your inventory with crap items except the first slot, and you leave it that way until you get a cool ability in the first slot, and then you go and empty the next slot and so on, and you can really kind of customize what your mutants end up with. So even though they didn't, you know, develop any sort of talent tree system or anything like that to help you pick your spells, you can still get there. So the door is locked by Magic of Black, so what you do is you go to items, and this is another thing that stopped me for a long time when I was a kid. And you scroll down, and turns out there's two more things down here. Because this is not an infinitely large list, it's always fixed to eight inventory items. It turns out there's two more slots down here. So I can use the Black Sphere, 
and then I can go through here because the seal has been broken. So now we're working our way up the tower. There's nothing to see in the side room. I mean, we could farm some fights, but we're going to get in plenty of fights, and it's a long way to the next town, so we're going to go ahead and just fight, and we fight our first wolf. It doesn't look particularly wolfish. Um, there are, I guess, a limited number of sprites. It's in the same group. Every other uh, monster in that group is a cat of some kind, you know, like a tiger or whatever. So they decide to call the first one wolf, but use the same art because reasons... Wolf has been faded, and we found some meat. So now, again, we're going to have to take a look. Wolf is a level 3 monster, so we can go from a phantom level 3 to a ghoul level 3. Which I'm going to go ahead and do, because the phantom is obviously not very impressive. So, we're going to feed that to Eero over here, changing him to a ghoul. Oh, and a slime! Actually, slime is was one of the ways that we could improve um, through some optimization, I think. I don't remember. So, we can scratch people with nails or use poison fangs. I'm going to bet the slime's probably immune to poison, so we're just going to use our nails to claw at them. Not much damage. Ooh, melt. Dissolve 17 hit points. 17 damage. I don't know if the fact that it says, you know, dissolve 17 damage mean anything different than anything else. Meat of slime. So, if I am currently a ghoul... Ghoul, 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 right over there, and I want to eat the meat of a slime. What does that do for me? It brings me back to a phantom, so I'm going to say no to that. I think I prefer being a ghoul. Ghouls just want to have fun. So we're just working our way up the tower. We're going to go up about five floors here. Do, do, do. Now, over here is kind of interesting. This is a world, a little pocket dimension that you can go into. It's totally friendly. As far as I know, there's no monsters. And there's a town here, but they're just lazy bastards who just exist in paradise that that creator made, and no one works, there's no shops. And that's it. Just here for flavor. There's like a little whirlpool thing down here, but I don't think it does anything. Oh, actually, it might be a healing fountain. Yeah, top this off. Oh, well, that's actually a really handy stop. I forgot about that. But... There's nothing for us to do on this level, so we can just... And the tower door isn't locked or anything, so we can just work our way up the stairs and keep going. I think we go left here. Can't remember. Yep, there we go. Through here. I believe... Is it here that there's a chest? Oh, I might be wrong. Uh, two ghouls in a row. And you can see I lost... Uh, what did I have? Like, was it thunder there for a while? And I don't have it. So that, that happens. You get abilities, you lose them. Very annoying. Although not anno as annoying as the next level is, actually. Next level is the level of misdirection and confusion. The level of, like, let's just try to extend gameplay, because we don't actually have that much stuff going on. But once you know it, things are pretty okay. Let's power our way through these ghouls. There we go. Ghoul meat. Um, no, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, because we're already in dead. That's unlikely to be a combination that does anything. I guess there was one more level before we get our little cult. Ah, yes. Um, on this level, there is another healing fountain. There's another pocket dimension, but we're just going to ignore that. Three gargoyles! I wonder about stenching them up. Reducing their damage. We'll just beat them up. It's fine. I don't think I need to poison them, but I want to see what that does. Ow. We did two big attacks to them and didn't kill anyone. Okay, they don't do a ton of damage. Oh, it's Paralyzation Fangs! Well, that's quite interesting. Not terribly useful here because, in fact, like, we still need to kill you. There you go. But, yeah, it's interesting. It's good to know, actually, if we get a different kind of uh, monster comp, we'll want to take that into account. And one more gargoyle to get through. And we're just going to keep slashing away at them. Not a whole lot of strategy to be used here. But that's alright. I'm expecting we'll get some meat. Yeah, meat of gargoyle. So if we're a ghoul and we eat gargoyle meat, it'll drop us down to a level 1 clipper. It's kind of a funny... Um, that that monster type goes from a level 1 to 7. And the way that the, uh, the leveling system works is... Yeah, so the monsters have a type. And... What type you are, plus the, the, the monster meat that you eat, affects what type you become. But there's a sort of a bit of an internal level for the monsters, and what happens in the type you, you're going to become... Um, so again, there's the, your level and the meat level, and use the highest of the two as the new level, or the target level. 
When you look at the type you're going to become, if there's a monster of exactly that level, that's what you become. If there's not, but there is a monster just, just exactly one level above, then you become that. If it's not one exactly above, then what it does is it starts at one below, then two below, and it keeps descending, and it finds the lowest, or the first monster as it goes down in the list at that point. Um, and so with the, that, that type that the clipper is, whatever kind of type of monster that is, um, there's a huge gap from one to seven. So if you're level six, or the meat you ate is level six, then you become whatever the level seven version is, and that's fine. But anything short of that, you become the level one and then you've got to sort of start progressing up again. But again, as long as you kill a powerful monster, it'll be high-level meat, and so it'll get you back in pretty quickly. Uh, so, we've got three slimes on the left and one barracuda on the right, and we don't have any AoE stuff, which is really annoying. I could just paralyze this barracuda, though, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm just going to slice at the slimes, and I'm going to paralyze the barracuda. Nice. Because paralyzing the lead slime, well, first of all, it wouldn't surprise me if the slimes were immune, because it just thematically makes sense, but it might not be the case. Um, but we have to kill the first slime to get to the second and third, and you can only paralyze the guy in the front, so... That's a lot of damage. I bet you Melt ignores armor. I bet you that's what's going on. And we'll just add some more damage over here. I think there's a random chance every round that paralysis breaks, just like most of the uh, status effects. Ow. All right, they have still spread things out. Okay. Um, two more slimes left. Jeez. Ow. There is a healing potion or healing fountain on this level. I just don't remember where it is. And I kind of oh, Barracuda lifted its paralysis. And I kind of want to avoid. God damn it. Um, more random encounters just wandering around, not knowing where it is. Oh, it's only three damage from the Barracuda. Could have probably just did more damage. And paralyze it again. Holy cow! We are probably going to lose some people in this encounter, which is really disappointing. Um, I'm, I'm going to put everyone on the slime, even though it's probably going to be overkill. The slime does wicked damage, and the barracuda does not. Three damage is nothing. Come on, kill it. Oh, shit. We went a whole round. Oh, thank you for not attacking the one who is nearly dead, though. Again, this is all. this has got to be overkill, but I don't care. Okay, good. And we should just be able to obliterate this thing pretty easily now. Because I don't think the Barracuda has a lot of hit points. Man, maybe I should become a slime. Level 1 or not. So this is slime meat. I think, um, I don't remember if we checked it with a ghoul. Oh yeah, this would lead me to become a fountain again. Or, phantom again. Cancel. So, uh, what do I want to do? Cancel this. Load up this. Change the order of the party a bit. Oops, it's clicked. No, that's fine though. Just put the highest hit point people in front, because again, they're more likely to get attacked. This is, oh, there's the fountain. Okay, so I had gone the wrong way to leave, but did that full heal me? I want to check actually. It looks like the answer is almost yes, not actually. Okay, big group here, and includes the Obake or Obake or whatever, the ghost that I was for a while. Um, with so many people, it's basically impossible for us to like deal with anyone. I'm gonna go ahead and um, and barrier. I don't think I'll then deal with paralysis. I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna paralyze the the bird. We're gonna focus on I don't know killing the ghost. But I'm gonna double barrier here. Get a lot of defenses. And there we go. Killed the Obake. Yeah, I guess I only have 20 hit points. That makes sense because that's what my character was when I was one. I still like Obake. Oh man, I'm so baked. So, probably overkill this target, but that's okay. Actually, Dragonfly seems to be pretty damn tough. And the Condor is paralyzed, too. That's true, too. So it's totally okay that I just max out my damage over here. Yeah. It is a, a higher ranked. It's in the same... It's in a Fly group. The first level is a Fly. The second level is Dragonfly. But it might be level 3 or level 4, technically. So, yeah, it is, it is a little bit more potent to become a Dragonfly. I think it's level 4. Again, there's no real levels, but it's just, like, you know, sort of comparative rank. Meat of Obake. So, that is a phantom or ghost or whatever, which means I don't get anything. Uh, oh, I'm going down. There's the door. 
Oh no, this is another this is another side world. That's right. Four fiends control this world. Must endure the suffering to reach paradise. Right, this is like purgatory. We can just fight these guys, which I guess I just did because I clicked on them. Um, sure. But this is just a side world where there's nothing really. I mean, there might be there might be a little something. There, some of these have like one chest or something with some loot or something hidden. But we're not gonna we're not gonna explore this. I did just totally take a wrong turn. But we can get a little bit more development on our mutants, a little bit more money from these gargoyles. When we get the next world, we're going to be loaded, which is good, because we have a lot of shopping to do over there. Yeah, I could have stenched the group. But and I don't know, like, if monsters always attack with strength or whatever. Meat of gargoyle, would that lead to anything interesting? No, clipper level one. Which I think we may have already checked. Oh, shit, I just clicked on the same guy again. Um, I could run, but it's only one this time. I, I got confused about what position I was in. I just tried to go left to leave. Oh, we got a flame attack. That's nice. Um, I'll just go with the rapier attack for now. It's still okay. At least they don't do much damage. Okay, cancel. So, now I go up and leave. I guess I may as well go drink from the potion again, the fountain again. It's not going to accelerate our, our pace through this tower too much. So I must just want to go up the central stairs. There's the doorway. A pair of gargoyles. Oh, I'll flame you since you're a stack. It'd be nice if the flame went off first. It's really annoying when it goes last. And there's like... There it is. And there's only one stack left. So we killed one and the other one's been heavily damaged. That's the advantage using like the flame attacks is they hit an entire stack of enemies, which is wonderful. And it's great when both your mutants have some sort of attack like that. And there are... Wow, we walked one whole square. Ooh, we've got double single stacks. Um, well, I think I'm going to single attack over here. We know that the Obakes have very few hit points, so I'm hoping that one flame on them will just kill the entire stack. And it does. Good. Hell, 47 damage on that roll. We might have been able to kill all the condors, too. I'm not sure. Condors are pretty tough. Yeah, clearly, because they're still standing. Now, if the flame goes off first, it would be wonderful, because it would probably kill the first one, but it didn't. Still, flame does huge damage, so it still accelerates things. And it'll get replaced when we go to an inn, and we are nearly there. Now that I got the right door. Now, this is the place. Yeah, may as well do this. We don't really need a colt, because I actually don't think that's going to increase our damage. Wow, four stack of worms. Uh, stench them. Although, I think they might use different types of attacks that aren't really going to benefit from me doing that. So we drop all their strength down by one. The whole stack. Oh, it is biting us, so it, we may be saving a little bit of damage. Although, we're not really that desperate, so... Flame the stack. It'll probably kill the first one. Yes, it did. Good. If we get lucky, maybe the flame will go off on the thing, but... Oh, it did! That'll probably clear up the rest. It did. Do we want to eat worm meat? Worm, worm, worm. Will drop me to. Will bring me to a level three piranha. You know what? Let's do it. Just because. We'll just switch things up. Hey, I'm a piranha. We're gonna open that. Get a cult. I think we're gonna keep going with the rapiers. So cult is a ranged weapon, uh, which means it uses agility to hit and does um, fixed-ish damage. I mean, there's still range, but I think it annoys defense, or, or ignores defense, or maybe that's not accurate. Maybe it's just it doesn't really use the stat for damage dealing. Those dissolves do huge freaking damage. At least flame works on these guys. And we'll go to... Oh, the Kinesis is pretty good. It can paralyze an entire stack. So, what are we now? We're Piranha. And we want to see what would happen if we were to eat slime meat. It would turn me into a level 1 clipper, which I'm not interested in becoming. Because the way the mechanics work out, I think by the time when you get to a, like a rank 11 monster, you can't lose anything anymore, which is nice. So that door is sealed like, over here. That's the next way up to the tower. So if I go there, it'll tell me it's locked by, I think, white magic. Oh shit, we are low. I'm going to try to run. Ah! When you run, there's a 50-50 chance. So Khan just fell. I should have uh, just reorganized my group. There's a 50-50 chance that you succeed. And we didn't. 
So I should have reshuffled my group. I didn't notice that. So we'll have to spend 100 gold to res Khan, which isn't the real problem. The real problem is that you do have a limited amount of hearts and 10,000 gold to get a new heart. Single target, single target. Oh wait, hold on. Single target wolf and wolf. Let me flame that. There we go. Kill the stack. Nice. Finish the wolf. Meat of gargoyle. I don't think we checked that with the piranha, so... That would lead me to level 3 ghoul. Um, you know what? Which I will do, because Piranha looks kind of shitty. It's only got 10 uses of its abilities. I forgot to shuffle my group, but it doesn't matter now. Man, we are getting, like, a lot of times when we only get to move a, a square or two in between fights. But, there's actually a section in World 2 here, which we're about to go into. Technically, it's 4 or 5 of the tower. Um, where we often find ourselves having to farm some money. And we may not have to do that at this point, because we've already done it. But usually you farm it in safety by being right next to a town, so you can keep revisiting the inn. There we go. So he's going to tell me to talk to the old man. Okay, thanks for the advice. Do this, pop out of the tower. We can still get random encounters here. Be nice if we didn't. There we go. Hit the town. So we get a couple of words about, like, voyage by ship is too dangerous because of pirates. Saw an island sailing like a ship. That's a big hint for something. Uh, we want to go to the heart building over here. Talk to this guy, and get her rest. So, yeah, not very expensive, but we do have a limited number of uses of that on each character. So I think this is just a tavern. We can get some extra information. What do you get here? Oh, that's the guild! No, we don't have to recruit anyone. We could do that. If someone dies, we could just recruit someone to replace them. Go to the inn, get the full hit points. 3,700 bucks. It's not bad. What do you have to say? Say Ryu has banished Ryu O. Uh, Alright, thanks. And there's more little hints about things. Caves are connected to various islands. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And Demon Boy. Brothers live in a town on an island in the northeast. Okay. Um, so... I think it might be a good idea. So, we don't want to buy any of these weapons. These are strength-based weapons. Not interested in those. We could get gold helmets, which are pretty useful, but we actually should get silver very soon. So I don't think we're interested in buying any of this equipment at all. We could and maybe should invest in some more stat boosters. But I actually think I'm going to save my money um, so that we can start buying sabers. Sabers, if you recall, is a weapon that Wake started with. And I don't remember the numbers, but like I think you can effectively think of something like um, your tax is basically your agility, like your damage you do is your agility multiplied by your uh, by some number. So, uh, but, Sorry, your, your your agility multiplied by, or divided by some number, so you're not using the whole agility, then multiplied by some uh, factor based on your weapon. And all that to say that basically, um, I think while the rapiers multiply, you know, whatever your agility value is by like three or four, the sabers do it by six or something like that, it's a pretty sizable damage boost, especially if you're putting on people with uh, relatively high stats. So we're going to want to upgrade to that pretty quickly, and we'll want to upgrade to silver armor. Which is better than gold armor. There we go, kill the phantom. The first look at an actual phantom. I think this is the fastest way through here. So we got these main as a caves, and there's actually, um... Oh, oh that's a big stack of ma magicians, which does not make me very happy. I wonder if I can just paralyze them. Magicians are pretty weak. But the problem is, they can put your people to sleep, and they can heal themselves, which can lead you to be in a really bad situation sometime. Let me do a little quick save here, just, just in case. It's nice when they cure when you haven't hit them yet. They have about 100 hit points, if I recall. Oh, Eero can't be slept. Oh, Khan can be slept, though. Eero can't be slept because he's undead, I think. So you can see, they can, like, sort of mass sleep you, and then just, like, keep healing themselves and make it impossible for the people who are awake to actually ever kill them. Sleep does have a chance of lifting every round, like that. Someone just woke up. But it is really a big pain in the ass. We're down to our last one now, so that's good. Ice is asleep. But they're worth a lot of gold. So yeah, you can see there, there's um, there's other ways out. Oh, these guys put people to sleep too. Other ways out from these caves. They lead you. There's all these little islands, and a lot of them just have one cave, and they're sort of dead end. This route here should result in us getting to an island which looks like a dead end, but isn't really because of reasons. This, again, this particular world I find really annoying for the mazes. 
If like if you're going into this blind and you haven't done it before, I mean I'm hoping my memory is mostly intact, but I think we're mostly gonna be okay. I gotta put a cut in this video here. But here's what happens. So you've you've done a bunch of these where you get to these islands and they're dead ends, so you got nothing to do. Well, one of the rumors you remember hearing was that someone saw someone in a floating island. Now most of these islands you can sort of step on and that's that's nothing happens. But this one here, because reasons, is the one magic floating island in the game and you can move around with it as a vehicle. Which is kind of bullshit. But there you have it. So we're going to take this, and we're going to go to the top right corner of the map. And there's another town there. And this is the town. We can get extra rumors and stuff too. But, more importantly, they sell sabers. And I think silver armor. They don't sell any level up potions. Their potion shop only sells martial arts moves, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, you can get sabers for 2060. And yeah, silver armor as well. I think I'm going to prioritize the sabers first because we're going to be doing some farming by this town. And since we're going to be in relative safety from like actual hit point death, uh, we're mostly just going to want to deal damage as quickly as possible. All my people are similarly tough, so I think it doesn't really matter who's at the front, especially at this phase. We're going to get rid of that. I'll probably sell the colt as well. So ice here, appropriately enough, ice has flame vulnerability, which is what this X is. Fire vulnerability would take bonus damage from that. Flame damage, got the stealth built in, kinesis, and again, these will keep shuffling around as the game goes on. Uh, you have a lot of charges left in your AP. You've got 23 agility. I'd like to put on whoever's got the highest. Oh, which is ice out of the two mutants. Because, you know, may as well have the person with the highest agility use the one that's got the best agility modifier or multiplier. Is that enough for a silver helmet if I pick one up right now? It is, so I may as well get it. Wait, doesn't even have a helmet, so that'll be a pretty big improvement. So, I mean, I think normally you would have wanted to be a little bit more cautious, um, you know, in World 1. Get everyone fully equipped, fully armored up. Oh, we can talk to some of these doofuses. Um, because, you know, you may as well for safety. We probably wouldn't have that one death. We got King of Dragons. Blue Dragon. Lives in the castle in depth of the ocean. That's interesting story. We can use that information. Do not approach the old man living in the cabin in Southern Island. So that's what we want to do. When you put the air seed in the ocean, it produces oxygen. Hmm, what are they talking about? So, um, tell you what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and get the next little story element. And then between episodes, I'll probably do a little bit of farming. So we got a little hut here. And there's a bit of a maze that you have to follow to get to the old man. To this way, because if we went that way, there's like a little table block in the way. So we want to go this way, then we want to take a left. And then over here, there'll be an old man. And we don't actually have to talk to him, you can skip him. But he says the air seed is on the palm tree in the center. A little cryptic kind of note, which is kind of... Hmm, what does that mean? It's not in the center of this particular maze. Rather, if we... Oh, the ocean encounters tend to be pretty big. Um, this one is not. There's the saber. I'm gonna rock. Oh, we really want to kill those pirates faster. Because they're gonna steal my gold, but uh, we'll finish the gecko first. The geico. Because I don't think they'll kill the pirates, so they're gonna steal some of my gold. Ice not doing much damage. See, look at that. See? How rude. Um, let's look at the single damage dealers to do that. Yeah, actually, I didn't realize it's the, um, the person with the flame spell has got the better weapon, which means we're not really getting to take advantage of the, the saber. But we should be okay. So yeah, the saber's doing a lot more damage. Do we want to eat a gecko? Oh, oh what are we right now? We're not, um, uh, we went back to being a ghoul, right? Yes. We're ghoul, and we can eat gecko meat, which would turn us into a level 1 albatross. Water, water everywhere. My the board... Come on! I just want to... i got to put a cut in here, and I'm just trying to get to the next bit. Um, Alright, we are going to go and single target you. And No, oh, no, no, don't flame the fish. They're immune to, fi to flame damage. So, just saber this guy, because apparently the gecko takes a lot of damage, actually. And the fish don't do much damage. This is the piranha. They're higher level than the barracuda that we were running into before. Or the barracuda, I should say, because of character limit. It's still not great. Okay. We saved some money on our car insurance. Let's go and beat up the piranha. I'll have to check our damage. It's possible we've taken a fair amount. Not like, again, I'm, I'm trying to go relatively fast here. Um, but farming up some of the uh, the full silver stuff was probably a good idea. So I'll probably take a break between episodes and do that. I, check, I didn't check the piranha meat. I checked the gecko meat. What does the piranha meat do for us? would turn us into a level 2 worm, which would definitely be a downgrade. So no thanks. 
Um, let me take a look at my characters here. Let's do a quick little move, drop you down to the bottom, we'll bring Khan up to the top. Khan who actually has the most hit points. That's the edge of the map, by the way, that little black area. Which I swear on the original Game Boy, um, did not look like that. It was just a slightly different water pattern. So there's a palm tree in the middle here. If you face it and push A, which isn't very obvious, you get the air seed, which we'll need that for later. So I'm going to go back to the village. I'm going to, you know, rest up and just keep buying some sabers and then try to build, buy a bunch of silver armor so we're ready for the next bit. But I don't want to bore you with that farming. So thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'll see you guys next time.